So in this video, we are going to start easing into geometric proofs. Now we're going to start off kind of slow, okay, because this stuff can be tricky. But here's some things that are really going to help you out in order to do well in this lesson. You need to remember the definitions, postulates, and theorems from the previous lessons, okay? You really need to have a good understanding of uh, these definitions, postulates, and theorems that we have been taught in the previous lesson. Otherwise, when you come to stuff like supplementary and things like that, you won't really know what's going on. So it's very crucial that you have this building block to um, do well in the geometric proofs. Okay, so we're going to kind of ease into it. So let me kind of work through this example and just show you how we just build on top of stuff we already know. Okay, so let's look at what we're given. We know that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And we also know that angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. Um, we have this diagram here on the right to kind of help us. And we also know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Okay, so that's the stuff we know. And we want to prove this. All right. So down here, we have the proof. And we have the statements and reasons, but there's some blanks given. So just to start off, uh, we're not going to do a whole proof. We're just going to kind of work through this and see if it makes sense and see if we can fill in the blanks where it needs to be, okay? So let's take a look at 1, okay? So we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and we know that angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. That's just given, okay? So there's nothing too difficult with this first step. It's just like when we were doing algebraic proofs. But take a look at step 2. Okay, they don't tell us what the step is, but we do know we're going to be working with the definition of supplementary angles. So, like I said at the beginning, you need to know what that definition is. So here's a definition right here, I just put it up on the screen. Supplementary angles, they're angles whose sum equals 180 degrees. So, if you know this definition, we can say, oh, this angle... 1 and angle 2 are going to add to equal 180 degrees. So we can write that here. So we have angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. And we also know that angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. So that means that the sum of those measures are also going to equal 180 degrees. So that's not too bad, okay? We just, we needed to know the definition of supplementary angles to do this. And here we can just write the equations, okay? But once again, if you don't know this definition, you're going to be in big trouble. That's why you have to remember those definitions. Okay, let's look at step three. All right, so we did two, we're at step three. So here's what they did. They said, let's let the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equal the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. So how do they go from this step that I have written in blue and red to this? Well, think about this. If angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees and angle 3 plus angle 4 equals the same thing, if these are both the same thing, see, then isn't it logical to just say, oh, these two have to be equal? So they're making a substitution. Their substitution, the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4, and for 180 into this first equation. So that, we can say, is just the substitution property of equality. All right, so that was just the substitution property of equality. Okay. Now, uh, let's see how we went from step, four, step 3 to step 4. So they just wrote down uh, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, and that's just going back to this given up here. You see they're just copying down the given, so that's what we have. Okay. So let's look at step 5. The measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3, they're just using the definition of congruent angles, and that just says if the angles are congruent, then the measures have to be equal. So that's just using the definition of congruent angles. But then we need to figure out how do they go from here to here. Now, step six is a little tricky compared to how we've done it before. They said that they used the subtraction property of equality in steps three and four. Okay? So they're using these two steps, steps three and four. Um, no, actually, I'm tripping. That's not step four, it's step five. So right here, we're using steps three and five. So here's what you have to know. What, what did they do? Well, we know that measure of angle two equals measure of angle three. So what they did with the subtraction property of equality is on the, this side, they decided to subtract the measure of angle two on the left. And on the right side, they decided to subtract measure of angle 3. Now you might be thinking, hey, Mr. McLeod, we're subtracting two different things on both sides of the equation. We can't do that. We have to subtract the same thing. But they're equal. 
so they're the same. You see that? So that's okay. We can subtract the same thing on both sides. Measure of angle 2 is the same thing as measure of angle 3. So that cancels out, that cancels out, and you're left with just the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4. Okay, and that's just using the subtraction property. So it was kind of a little different than you might have seen it before, but just know that that's okay. You don't have to do it just like that, but we're just following their steps, and that's what they did. Um, so then what's the last step? We say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. So if you know that the measures of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4, then it follows that the angles are congruent. And once again, that's using the definition of congruent. The definition of congruence tells us that we can go from the measures of two things that are equal to saying that the angles are going to be congruent. All right, so that's it. We filled in the blanks with this proof. Um, and it required us to remember some things like the definition of congruence, the substitution property of equality, what it means to be supplementary angles. So you need to know those definitions, those postulates, those theorems and properties if you're going to do well in this lesson. Okay, so we've already been studying those. It's up to you to, to remember. Let's take a look at another example. So here we know angle BAC is a right angle and we also know that angle 2 is congruent the same as angle 3. So we want to prove that angle 1 angle 3 are complementary. Okay, so once again there's some things that we need to Keep in mind, what does it mean to be a right angle? Okay, so these are going to pop up in this uh, proof. So let's see what they said for the first one. For one, they said angle BAC is a right angle. And that's just given. Okay, that's just given. So what does it mean to be a right angle? Well, it means that the measure of the angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so where do they get that from? Well, that's just straight up the definition of a right angle. So right here we're just using that definition. I've got up here on the top of the screen the definition of a right angle. That's what it means, okay? So that's the answer for the reason in step two. All right, so we did up two. Let's take a look at three. Now this is blank, but they're telling us that we're using the angle addition postulate. So what could that possibly be? So let's look at this, okay? Look at this. We have BAC, this is this huge angle, and then we have it split up into angle one and angle two. So we can write the addition segment postulate like this. So here I have the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle BAC. That's just using the angle addition postulate. Okay, so now let's look at four. So now they wrote the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. And they told us that that was substitution from steps two and three, so that makes sense. They just took this, we know that it equals 90, and they substitute it in here, okay? So that's how they get that 90 degrees here. So far, so good, what's the next step? They said that angle two is congruent to angle three, and how do we know that? That's just given up here, they gave that to us, so that was the reason, and then six is blank. And they're telling us that we use a definition of congruent angles, so if they were using definition of congruent angles, that means they must have written that the measure of angle 2 has to equal the measure of angle 3 because that's what it means to use the definition of congruence. If this is congruent, that means we can say the measures are equal. So that's what we have for 6. And then how do they go from 6 to 7? So they said measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 3 equals 90. So at first they had this one. They had measure of angle 2. But notice that we know measure of angle 2 is the same as measure, measure of angle 3, so they substituted in here. And that's why we see it here. So they made a substitution. All right, so in steps four and six, they just used the substitution. That was step seven. And then here, if we know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 90 degrees, then we can just say this. We can just say this. We can say angle one plus angle three are complementary. And the reason why we can say that is that's just what it means to be complementary angles. Complementary angles are angles that add to equal 90 degrees. So that's the definition of complementary. And we're done. That's the proof. We filled in all the spaces. And once again, we had to use some definitions. We had to know the substitution property of equality. We had to know uh, how to fill this in. Uh, we had to know how to use an angle addition postulate. So we're basically just connecting a lot of stuff that we already know into this problem. So we are kind of easing into it, but if you feel like you're having trouble, it might be because you're not familiar with some of the definitions or the uh, postulates or theorems. And so we just you just need to practice on that, okay? Practice, 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 okay? 
And you should have been practicing that, that a lot before coming into this. Um, but if you're having trouble with it, just go back, review those definitions, postulates, and theorems. Let's take a look at one last problem. Uh, it says fill in the blanks to complete the two column proof. So here we have this picture. We know that uh, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 as shown in the picture. We want to prove that angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So here we have angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So this is the first step. This is just given. Okay, now uh, what do we know? Well, we know that the measures of the angles have to equal each other. And why is this true? Okay, think of for a second why is this true? It's true because if the congruent angles, if we know that these angles are congruent, okay, then we know that the measures have to be equal based off the definition of congruence. Okay, so we use the definition here. Let's take a look at this next step. How do they go from step two to B? They say they're using the linear pair theorem. That's what they mean by this. Now, if you don't remember the linear pair theorem, it basically says this. It says this down here at the bottom. The linear pair theorem says if angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair, then angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. That's basically what it says. Well, look at here at this picture. We know that angle 1 and 2 are a linear pair because that's one thing that we can assume from the picture. And actually, it, in my opinion, it probably would be better if they actually wrote that, said measure of angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair. But they didn't, but we can just assume from this picture we know they're, they're a linear pair. If we know that they're a linear pair, then that means that they're supplementary using this linear pair theorem. Okay, so once again, if you're not familiar with this, then you need to write it down and memorize it. Okay, so we can write this now. We can say the measure of angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and that's just using linear pair theorem. Okay, so that's where this came from. All right, so we did 3. Let's take a look at 4. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. So how does that follow from this step? Well, remember, if, uh, well, actually, they're telling us right here. We don't have to remember to tell us. That's just the definition of supplementary angles. Okay, if we know that these two are supplementary, then the measures have to add the equal 180 degrees. Now, let's see step five. What changed? So focus on this. This one right here and this one right here, the measure of angle 2 is now the measure of angle 3. How were they able to do that? Well, that was because of this, okay? Measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3, so they made a substitution in here. So that's the reason for this part. They just made a substitution. I'm just going to write sub, okay? So they made a substitution using steps 2 and 4. So think about this. If the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180, then we can say this. We can say that angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary because that's just the definition of supplementary angles, and we're done. That's exactly what we wanted to prove. The angle one, angle three are supplementary. We showed that in these steps. Okay. Now we just kind of fill in the blanks, and that's how we're going to start off these proofs at first. It's just being able to fill in the blanks, making sure you're comfortable with the theorems. Okay. So make sure you do the homework. Make sure you do that to get the practice, and let me know if you're having any problems with these.